In general, the higher the degree, the higher the salary. So why aren't more people pursuing higher degrees? The short answer, choices and trade-offs. You have a budget of $10 to spend on either burgers or bus tickets. Each burger costs $2 and each bus ticket costs 50 cents. How many of each could you buy with your $10 budget? If you bought only burgers, you could buy five, but then you would not have enough money left to buy bus tickets. If you bought only bus tickets, you could buy 20, but then you would be hungry without any burgers. For each burger you buy, how many bus tickets will you forgo buying? The answer is four. This is the opportunity cost of buying a burger. One burger or four bus tickets. Opportunity cost is the cost of the next best option. In the case of buying burgers, it's bus tickets. Let's expand on the concept of opportunity cost with a common decision. Do I pack a lunch for work or do I eat out? In this scenario, eating out costs $8 and bringing a lunch from home costs $3. The opportunity cost for eating out is $5, which is the difference between the options, eight minus three. At first, $5 may not seem like a big deal, but if we did it consistently for a year, the cost add up to $1,250 the price of a nice vacation. Marginal analysis is a driving factor for individuals as they decide how to fulfill their needs and wants. Margin or marginal in economics means uh, the extra amount of something. To give an example of how this is used in economics, we first must uh, introduce one more concept, utility. Utility is the satisfaction received when an individual consumes a product or service. If you consume a cookie, you will experience a certain amount of utility or satisfaction from eating the cookie. Utility can be measured in a unit of measurement called utils. Now let's put the two together. As you eat one cookie, you receive a certain amount of utility or satisfaction. As you eat a second cookie, you receive an extra or marginal utility for eating a second cookie. This continues on and on for each additional cookie you eat. As we continue to eat cookies, we experience the effects of one of the laws of economics, the law of diminishing marginal utility. This law says that as we consume more of a good or service, the utility we get from additional units of the good or service tends to become smaller than what we receive from earlier units. You can try this by eating an entire box of Oreo cookies. The first cookie is most likely more satisfying than the last cookie. As we use economic theories to study choice within budget constraints, we need to remember that we are looking to the future. We are asking ourselves, what can I consume next based on my budget that will bring me the most marginal utility? We must avoid taking into account the budget that has already been spent. These types of previously spent costs are called sunk costs and should not influence future choice. A production possibilities curve is a model that shows the trade-offs society makes regarding its use of its resources to produce certain goods and services. This production possibilities curve, which is also called a production possibilities frontier, shows a trade-off between devoting social resources to health care or devoting them to education. At A, all resources go to health care. And at B, most go to healthcare. At D, most resources go to education. And at F, all go to education. Both the individual opportunity set or budget constraint discussed previously and society's production possibilities frontier show the constraints under which individual consumers and society as a whole operate. Both diagrams show the trade-off 
in choosing more of one good at the cost of less of another. The production possibilities frontier also differs from the budget line in its shape. It is a curve and not a straight line. The reason the production possibilities frontier curves is because of the law of diminishing returns. This law states that each additional unit of resources committed to produce a certain product will give you a smaller marginal benefit as a result. The curve in the line is the lessening or diminishing effect as the resources are allocated to one type of good over another. This model gives us insights into the efficiency or inefficiency of a society's use of resources. Productive efficiency means producing goods using the most productive method and not underutilizing resources. Thus, all choices along the given production possibilities frontier like B, C, and D display productive efficiency. But point R inside the curve does not. Allocative efficiency means that the particular mix of goods being produced, that is the specific choice along the production possibilities frontier, represents the allocation that society most desires. The U.S. production possibilities frontier is flatter than the Brazil production possibilities frontier, implying that the opportunity cost of wheat in terms of sugarcane is lower in the U.S. than in Brazil. Conversely, the opportunity cost of sugarcane is lower in Brazil. The U.S. has a comparative advantage in wheat, and Brazil has a comparative advantage in sugarcane. Comparative advantage means that a country can produce a good at a lower opportunity cost than another country. This concept is important in regards to international trade. Two objections that tend to rise regarding economics are its method of scientific application and the morals related to economic issues. First is the fact that people, firms, and society do not act like many economic theories and models portray. Economies, economists would not argue that the theories and models used in economics are an exact science, but they would argue that they are useful approximations of these economic actors. The way consumers act is actually addressed in a particular arm of economics called behavioral economics. The second objection raised is regarding the morals associated with economic theories and models. To address this, economists are careful to define the arguments they make as either positive, meaning as a matter of fact, or normative, meaning as a matter of opinion or moral judgment. Economists realize that humans can be both selfish and selfless. This personal dimension of economic choices made tend to make economics more interesting without proving the theories and models invalid. A common concept in economics first introduced by early economist Adam Smith is the invisible hand. The basic idea is that consumers and producers of goods meet in the market and decisions are made there like the price of the goods and the quantity bought and sold without any central planning necessary. The market is controlled by what Smith coined the invisible hand. This concept alludes to the abilities of markets driven by selfish interest to bring about benefits to society with no intervention needed.